Talk about uh, Paul John Knowles' uh, childhood. Throughout his childhood, Knowles was in and out of the Florida School of Boys, a reform school with the terrible history of abusing, torturing, and even murdering its young inmates. We don't know if or how badly Knowles was abused, but it's likely the place had a negative impact on his life, which resulted in little care for authority figures when he was young. And also, Knowles was always wanted to be the, the center of attention with every, everything he did. Uh, he refused to do his homework, talk back, he talked back to adults, stole, and once punched a girl in the face for rejecting him. Whenever his parents or teachers reprimanded him, Knowles lashed out in terrible rage. His rebellion against authority won him attention from his friends, which encouraged his continued misbehavior. To talk about his adult life, Knowles' love for being the center of attention encouraged him to commit worse crimes. He was in and out of jail for most of his life. At the age of seven, he stole a bicycle. At the age of 19, he stole cars and took a police officer hostage. At 28, he faced the electrical chair for murdering at least 18 people. He tried to live on the straight and narrow path when he married Jackie Knight, but he couldn't shake old habits. Still, their marriage ended uh, on good terms, quite the opposite that happened with Angela Kovic, the woman that he began to correspond with, with uh, from jail in letters. Um, when they, be, when they made plans to marry, Kovic hired a lawyer to get him out early, and Knowles set his heart out on turning his life around. He took college classes, started looking for work as a sign painter, and had full intentions of moving to San Francisco to get away from the bad influences provoking his actions in Florida. But Kovic broke off the engagement upon his release. That night, Knowles killed three people, or so he claimed. While these alleged murders were never confirmed, he blamed Kovic's rejection on the escalation to rape and murder. The following is a list of the numerous people that have fallen as victims to Paul John Knowles, also known as the Casanova Killer. From 65-year-old Alice Cooper to 11-year-old Lillian Anderson, Knowles' list varied greatly. Beginning in July of 1974, Knowles' killing spree took off throughout the states. Although police have only linked him to 18 confirmed deaths, Knowles claimed to have killed 35 people in total. His victims were men, women, and children ranging from 11 to 65 years old. With theft, sex, and money as his motivation, Knowles went as far as to use different strangulation methods and even shootings in order to get as he pleased. John Knowles' motives were he wanted to be remembered no matter what. That's why he did so many crazy things. Uh, he was had a thirst for fame. Um, he wanted to go out in a blaze of glory. He um, wanted everybody to know who he was and didn't care what it was for. And the reason that, like the most um, thought reason that he committed his murders was that his he was rejected by his fiance um, a few months before the murders started. Um, it was, I guess, uh, Angela Kovic. She went to a psychic that told her, do not marry the man that you are supposedly with right now. And she was like, okay. So he, she split, she cut off the wedding and he went on a rampage. And out of the 18 confirmed murders that John Knowles was convicted of, there are some similarities between the victims as well as some differences. His victims varied over several categories. He was consistent on the amount of degradation and disregard he carried for his victims though. Um, he stole from them, he used their credit cards to stay hidden to, so his ID wasn't, like, they didn't find him and he wasn't detected. And then he often took mementos from his um, victims as well. He took a recorder from one of them that he was, I guess he recorded all of his murders from that he supposedly gave to his attorney, but that never got found, it was lost. And the differences in his uh, crimes were that he didn't put, pick a specific gender. He that was didn't really care who we were, the age or anything. And then there were victims that got away, which was two hitchhikers that he picked up on the side of the road and then eventually just left them. He let them go for no reason. 
nobody knows. And then there are two females, which were one was a journalist and one was a reporter. He let them go because he wanted to know, or he wanted his story to get out. He wanted people to know who he was, and they to tell his story. Psychological perspectives on criminality attempt to explain the phenomena of crime by focusing on mental and emotional states that might motivate someone to commit crime. The psychological applications to criminology mostly focus on personality disturbances and cognitive development. As a child, Knowles was bounced around foster homes and reformatories with little stability and consistency, causing an infringement on the process of moral development. He was uncooperative with authority and would often defy direction. His deviance earned the attention of his peers, which only encouraged his misbehavior. Knowles was, by all accounts, wholly psychopathic. The fundamental characteristic of psychopaths is defined as poverty of affect, or the inability to empathize and accurately imagine how others may think or feel. Yeah, I better know what you're thinking right now. Sorry, what? Uh, okay. Knowles was exactly that, unable to empathize, and would carry out his murders accordingly. Knowles murdered impulsively, with obvious disregard for the feelings of his victims. On the night his murder spree began, he bound and gagged a 62-year-old woman. 65. How'd you know that? Okay, he, he bound and gagged a 65-year-old woman. He stole her belongings took off in her car. She ended up choking to death on her gag. Her death may not have been Knowles' intention, but he certainly didn't intend on making sure the woman didn't die from the gag. After he was connected with the auto robbery and murder, murder of that woman, he attempted to abandon the car he stole. He kidnapped and murdered two 11- and 7-year-old girls, respectively, who he thought might report him to the police. Again, he had no regard for the feelings of the two girls and no shame in killing them. Under the lens of the psychological perspectives on crime, Knowles was no surprise. His lack of stable moral development and his skewed experience with family and childhood made him ripe for a criminal future. The theories and pillars of psychological thought on crime help inform how Knowles came to be the criminal he was. So what happened to Paul John Knowles? In November of 1974, Knowles attempted to rape a woman at gunpoint. Now she managed to get away and called the police, but by the time the police arrived, Knowles was long gone. However, on November 17th, an officer spotted Knowles' car on the highway and pulled him over. Yes, Paul John Knowles pulled over for the officer. However, he then assaulted the officer, managed to get a hold of his firearm, and take the officer hostage. So, Knowles then took the police officer's car uh, with the officer in the backseat and pulled over a civilian because he wanted to get a more discreet car. Um, so he, he took the civilian and the officer hostage and then killed them both and disposed of their bodies. However, when Knowles went to go get back on the highway, uh, the police department had already been notified that there was an abandoned police car on the side of the road and they set up a roadblock. Uh, so Knowles encountered this roadblock and drove through it. Uh, unfortunately, he totaled his car uh, like and got away. I'm sorry? I heard like a bitch. Oh. Okay. Uh, he totaled his car and escaped on foot. Um, however, later that day, uh, he was held at gunpoint by a civilian with another shotgun, um, and the civilian then turned Knowles over to custody, uh, into police custody. That was seven miles from the roadblock, so the police, their search radius wasn't nearly as large, so if it weren't for this civilian, Knowles probably would have gotten away. Um, so in police custody, Knowles confessed to 20 murders. Actually, it was 35. I'm sorry. Knowles confessed to 35 murders. Um, and the next day, on the 18th, two officers were taking Knowles to go and retrieve the firearm from the police officer who he kidnapped and killed earlier. And so while they were driving to go and collect this firearm, um, Knowles managed to get his hands out in front of him from this, from, you know, they were handcuffed behind his back. He managed to get his hands out in front of him and assault the driver um, and, you know, discharge his firearm. So while the driver was trying to maintain control of the vehicle, uh, the passenger, um, oh, uh, well, the, the passenger uh, pulled out his pistol and shot Knowles in the chest, ultimately killing him. But I was just informed that Paul John Knowles is actually in the studio with us today, and we are going to cut to a live, exclusive exit interview. I'm back. Mr. Knowles, how did you like the reformatories you attended as a child? How were you treated? What do you think? It's just like the rest of them. 
I probably did what they told me less times than I didn't, you know? I don't like authority. Felt like I was in charge. Intimidation is the best strength that a man can have. So Mr. Knowles, with all the media attention that you're getting right now, how do you feel about that? Media attention? It's awesome. I'm like John Dillinger, Bonnie and Clyde. You know how many letters I get from women now that I'm famous? It's freaking awesome. I must have done something right, obviously. So I, we know that you don't handle rejection well. Let's talk about your fiance, Angela. Oh, that bitch. She didn't deserve me. I was too good for her. She was the reason I killed all these people. If it wasn't for her, these people wouldn't be dead. I should have just killed her first. So, you regret anything? Regret anything? Yeah. This has been a time in my life. Of course I don't regret anything. Okay, well what's next for you, Paul? What's next for Paul John Knowles? I might be in prison, but I'm going to live out the rest of my life in infamy. You are not going to forget the Casanova killer. I'll tell you that. Thank mm -hmm. you.